I'm Miss Stacy. Welcome to Stacy's Homestead. And today we're going to be making fire cider. Now, if y'all don't know what fire cider is, it's a great immune boosting tonic, basically. So Mary Gladstar is famous for this. It's she brought it to its well-known state. It's in today. So, I mean, a lot of people, especially homesteaders, like to make fire cider, and it really works. It really helps, like, if you're feeling like, um, it's good for everyday, just tonic if you want to do that, or if you're feeling, like, sick and there's cold going around, you want to take it, and it'll help ward off all those germs. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very, very, very helpful tonic to just keep your, your body going, you know, in the cold and flu season. So, I have to do an advisory here. I'm not a doctor, y'all. You know that. I'm not, you know, saying that this will work over regular medicine and stuff. But, it, you know, I'm not, like, advising you not to go seek medical help. If you need it, go do that. I'm just saying that, um, you know, I love herbal medicine. And it's always good hand-in-hand hand with Western medicine as well if you need it. There's a place for everything. You know what I mean? So, yeah, if you need, if you're sick and you need to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. You know, this isn't like the, the you know, wagons in the old days, snake juice here that's going to cure everything, but it's going to help, and it helps um, my family and myself. And so here's what I got, okay? I made, I make this maybe every three years. This is about four-year-old tonic and it still is good okay super I uh, it smells so good it just has its own unique smell and but it tastes awful by itself my kids I forced them to take it they would gag it down <laughs> because I would forgot in I didn't read completely when I was giving to them. This is like five years ago, like six years ago. I don't know. It was a long time ago when I first started making it and I didn't add the honey. So you can add honey to it to make it taste better and your kids won't gag to, trying to get it down. <laughs> My daughter, every time she, she was a sickly one, I'd say, oh no, you got to take some tonic and I'd make her take a shot of this and it really helps, but it doesn't taste good going down. But um, this is without the honey. Now I have some with honey and it's so much better. <laughs> uh, my daughter's gonna, gonna say, why didn't you do that with the honey? She could have saved her so much. But anyways, yeah, so at the very end of it, um, I'm going to, this is like three, four years old, this stuff. This is what I have left, okay? A little bit of honey one that I ended up mixing up a couple years later in it. <laughs> to make it taste wonderful and without honey and it's good without honey because I love when I um, make bone broth or um, any type of uh, like meats or something that require uh, vinegar to help extract the nutrients this is the best stuff to put in there it gives it such good flavor it really does because it has all of all of these if you could see down here it has jalapenos, uh, onions, um, lemon, lime, orange, onion, ginger, horseradish, garlic, all in this. And anything else you want to throw in. I mean, there's so many different types of recipes. I do the basic, I basically go off of uh, Mary, uh, Rosemary Gladstar's uh, recipe and then I just you know add a little bit here and there like this time I'm going to add some of my pomegranates didn't do that last time I've added rose petals before that's good so anything that's going to give nutrients and a health boost so um, let's see I have a card here that explains a lot of things so we got we got um, warming herbs. They're all warming herbs, you know, things like um, cayenne pepper helps with sore throats. Garlic helps with sore throats. Jalapenos helps with sore throats. Like, um, helps invigorate the blood. So, um, it moves energy through the circulatory system. It's, you know, a warming medicine. So, um, horseradish is a good remedy for sinuses and digestive aid. 
garlic. It's known as a poor man's penicillin, um, natural antiseptic herb. Uh, it's also part of the Four Thieves um, vinegar that they meet, made. There's a legend about the Four Thieves who go grave robbing during the plague. <clears throat> and they made a vinegar which has a few of the ingredients in this from the poor man's uh, thieves vinegar. Not poor man's, the thieves, Four Thieves vinegar. Anyways, um, it kept the plague away. So this is, you know, they use uh, garlic in the Four Thieves vinegar. So research the Four Thieves vinegar and it's basically a tonic like what we're making here that help keep them from getting the plague at, so they could rob grapes. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah a lot of this ingredients was in the Four Thieves. So um, onions it could be good for a poultice um, a poultice is like something that you would like put on your skin and soak. Um, like, uh, it's good for congestion on the chest and for the ears. Ginger is really great for the circulatory system, aids in digestion also, of course. Cayenne, jalapenos, um, you know, they're all good for also circulatory and sore throats. But, um, you know, then you have all the vitamins and nutrients that's in each one of these ingredients. And what we're going to do is we're going to combine them all and put them in a gallon or half gallon jugs and steep it for four weeks. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I actually steep mine for like a year. <laughs> so for a very long time, I don't even, I keep everything in there. Um, I'll end up straining it eventually, maybe a year or so. You know, probably in the summertime, I'll end up straining it. And then what I do is I dehydrate everything I strain. And then I blend it up in um, a grinder. And it's really, really good um, to for making barbecue sauces and stuff. And adding as seasoning. So, alright. So, I'm bringing it in and we're going to get started. Alright, guys. So, we have... Oh, I have to say, I didn't mention this. This is something extra here. So, mm, it's really thick and ooey gooey. This, my friends, is garlic fermented in honey with um, hot pepper flakes and cayenne. It's so good for you and for your immune system. So next time I ever make this, um, I've made like three of these. It's been this is like uh, four years old, to, no three years old also. I make my medicines in big batches. I don't like to make them every year, and they just get better with age. So, anyways, next time I make this, I'm gonna grind up the garlic because um, I have to chew it. You know, I mean it's fine that I have to chew it, but it'd be better if I already had the garlic ground up. And then it would be easier just to swallow, you know. So this is something good to have. Um, to I mean, it's really good for your immune system when you're not feeling good. Good for sore throats, but um, it's good like to put in the teas and stuff. If I hadn't, I have to grind it up separately now. But that's a separate deal there. Okay. So we're gonna just chop up all of our stuff. We got jalapenos, we got some lemons, we got some oranges, we have some lime here and from my pomegranate tree. We're going to empty the pomegranate seeds in there. And we have um, ginger and it's really easy to peel ginger. It just like you can just take it off with your thumb and um, you can peel it or don't peel it but we're going to chop that up into small slivers because you want as much surface area to touch. So um, let's see, we got onions. We got a red and yellow onion. We got some, uh, let's see, horseradish, of course. This is from my garden. And horseradish loses its potency after you grind it up. So I can harvest this and this will stay in my fridge just like this for like a year. 
and I just grind it as I need it and it stays spicy that way and I keep it in a, a jar so but we're gonna use the whole thing of this so horseradish is really easy to grow even ginger but horseradish um, you could just take a piece and put it in your garden and don't touch it for two years and you can harvest it after that but um, it once you plant it it's hard to get rid of though so make sure you plant it in the spot I'm like you'll never get rid of it it's like a weed once you plant it make sure it's in a spot that you don't care that it stays in forever so um, and like right now is a good time to dig up your horseradish if you need it we're gonna chop all this up and get it ready rock and roll and of course you're gonna need your apple cider vinegar Okay guys, so I got everything chopped up, but I decided I'm going to grade my horseradish. I was going to use a food processor, but I think I want the texture of it graded, you know what I mean? So we're going to just grade it really fast. You peel a horseradish with a carrot peeler. Oosh! It's getting in your nostrils. Spicy stuff. It's like worse than onions. Mm. Let's do that much for now. Do that much for now. Alright, so let's start assembling our jars. We're gonna start with the horseradish first. I got three jars here. I have a half gallon. I have a half gallon, two half gallons. Well, this one might be a little bit more, and then a pickle jar, a gallon pickle jar. Woo! It's like onion. We're gonna get those in there. It's like a big old onion. Stings those eyes. All right. Let's do more now. Yeah. So my daughter, she would choke this stuff down, but then she would feel so much better afterwards. Shandon loves it. Like he didn't face him. It, and I love it. So some people without the honey can take it, but some can't. You know, she was super happy once they figured out to put the honey in it. And it's like so tasty after that. So yeah. So one of these is gonna be for. I think I'll do the gallon. Ooh, with honey, and then these two without. Because um, it'll last me a few years. Like, it's four years old and I still have these left. Clean those sinuses out, guys. Great use of horseradish. <laughs> ah, don't you hate it when you nick yourself? Oh. All right. About a handful in each one. We got going on here. And I didn't put a bowl or plate down. That's but my counter's clean. Alright, so let's do a little bit more in that gallon one. Two handfuls in the gallon one. It's fresh from the garden, guys. Horseradish, like once you grate it, if you're not putting it in vinegar, it won't keep. But if you grate it, you put it in vinegar and then it'll be fine. And your vinegar will become spicy too. So it makes a good uh, tartar sauce <laughs> with the vinegar, you know. Uh, man. I don't know, I think this was about the size of, um, I don't know, maybe almost 10 inches long, this root was, almost a foot, probably almost about a foot, yeah, probably about 12 inches, I'm thinking, between 10 and 12 inches, I didn't measure it, eyeballing it, that's what it seems like, all right. But this is really, really good stuff. And it really, like, you know what? We don't have, I grew up not having health insurance. And this is what you do, you know? If you 
And I don't, we don't really go to the doctor unless we have to, you know, for common colds and stuff. You gotta just, cause they're just gonna tell you to drink fluids, you know? So, um, let's do the pomegranates next. I do. Don't worry if you get um, stuff in it, like the little skins, it's fine. Yeah. But anyways, um, you got to do stuff like this. T make tonics and just healthy things. Food's your medicine, you know what I mean? Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So you want to make your food a medicine, you know? That's hypocrisy says that. All right, so we got get these pomegranates in here. I mean, this is good stuff. I have, yeah, I love making medicines, you know. And last year, about the time I was gonna do this, <laughs> I ended up getting. Uh oh, I, I shouldn't have said that. The you know what? I ended up getting the you know what? <laughs> uh, so. Um, but I still had leftover tonic, but I didn't have my elderberry hot toddy ready. I had to make that really fast. I'll do that in another video. My elderberry hot toddy. So good. Alright. Um, I don't like to want to get too much of this in here. Get some nice vitamins in here. My, uh, these just pop open on the vine and they're so good. You know, it's interesting the bugs haven't got to them or anything. Because I have ducks keep, and chickens. It really helps keep all those bugs away. And you gotta work with nature, you know. It's interesting, people with a lot of bug problems get sprayed a lot. <laughs> try to have a even balance in my yard you know like I had a, I got cats you know when you're out in the country mice become a problem and so I have I've always had indoor cats for the indoor mice that wants to come sneak in here then in my garage you know I had when you have pantry and and feed and stuff you got to get something for outside so we do live on this busy road that's what always deterred me from getting outside cats but you know um, I saved a couple and we'll see how they do they're we're training them in the garage they love it now they're used to the dogs and everything they like cuddle up to the dogs they're so cute they're really they come when they're called for dinner so the cats should be fine so we have outdoor cats um, for the garage situation and rodents and stuff and squirrels outside you know you got a squirrel problem you just have a lack of cat problem <laughs> so hopefully the cats take care of those squirrels too but yeah so we got those and the dogs they're all getting used to things so then you know you got chickens and ducks for all the other bugs and then try to have good bugs for the bad bugs like praying mantis and ladybugs all that stuff so anyways what I'm saying is nature is good okay so we got that in there now let's do our some onion let's do some onions here put a few onions in the bottom Try to layer it. Hmm. Make it look pretty. All right, let's do some ginger. Push that in there. I just sliced them up really thin. I didn't even skin them. The peel them. I didn't even peel them because I didn't want to. I just washed them real good. All right. Now let's get some um, red onion here. I got some red onion. 
Let's get put this over here so you can see. Move this out of the way. Get these red onions in here. And these beautiful jars. Yeah, so this like this stuff really works. It really like especially like before I go to holiday functions, I have everyone take some of this and then that um of course the vitamin C uh stuff um that you get from Costco, those like chew vitamin C chews. And then we all start eating oranges and every citrus you can cuz it's citrus season is coming. So this is when you start having your Eat with the seasons, you know? Alright, so let's get some jalapenos in here. Oh yeah, look at that. Jalapenos. So we take the shots before we go see family. And take elderberry syrup shots. And let's see what else. Um, the vitamin C chews. Oh, I forget what it's called. You know, those chewy things. The immune boosting vitamin C, whatever. Take those and your zinc and your vitamin D, and we're good to go. So, and uh, take your vitamin B complex, but yeah, this really helps. All right, now we're gonna put our citrus in. Let's see, these are lemons. Let's layer lemons. Put our lemons in. Get all kinds of lemons in here. There we go. Try to put it on the side where you can see it too. You know, I guess make it pretty. <laughs> I oh, and I took the seeds out. Just because if I blend this for a spice, I don't want the seeds in. All right, now let's do the orange. You know, let's do a little bit more ginger. A little bit more ginger. A little bit more ginger. And a little more onion. Get the rest of this onion in here. Get the rest of this onion in. Um, you can put hibiscus in here. Okay, let's see. Let's get some jalapenos. Let's do the orange. No, let's do a little jalapenos. I'm gonna try to make it pretty here. Little jalapenos. Um. I keep the seeds and everything. You want this spicy, you know? You don't have to have the jalapenos, guys, but I like it spicy. Okay, I have some more pomegranates here. This one I harvested a little bit earlier, so it's lighter in color. It still tastes good. Let's do our oranges. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. There. Okay, now let's do the lime. Um, let's do a little bit of ginger, more ginger. Let's do our lime. This one's getting pretty full right here. So look at that. It's starting to look really pretty. Really, really pretty. I love it. And then, um, 
I just put a towel over them or in a cupboard, uh, you know, for at least four weeks. Okay, guys? So, about four weeks in a cupboard. Let's put some lime in this one. So, we got one, two, three, one, two. There. Lime is a strong flavor, so I don't put too much. But the rest of it, look at that. It's so, such a beautiful concoction. Okay. Okay, now we're going to um, put our vinegar in. Now, you don't do the honey until it's done, okay, guys? So you're gonna do the honey when it's all done. After you decant it, decanting means just to empty it out and strain it and then um, you'll add your honey then. Now, I do about a cup of honey to it. So, but anyways, we're going to put our apple cider vinegar with the mother organic, okay? The mother means um, it's, uh, it just means it's not pasteurized. <laughs> so, uh, it means it's just organic, non-pasteurized, has all the good stuff in it. It's actually really, when I make my own apple cider vinegar, which we're going to do next time, um, you just it's better to use your own because um, it can form a SCOBY. It just, everything's active. This, I mean, was, um, something was done to it where it can't reproduce though. So it's not pasteurized, but it's made it where it's shelf stable. So it probably just heat it up. I don't know. But it's not gonna form a SCOBY like your own um, apple cider vinegar would. So, one gallon does all this. Now, if you're short, you want to cover everything. You need to, everything has to be covered. And if you're a little short, you can add lemon juice um, and some water because a little bit of water is not going to hurt. Yeah, so um, I think I'm going to add. Let's add some of this uh, lime juice I have. Lime, lemon juice. We have this laying around. Do a little bit of lime juice here. And then we'll add some water. And a little bit of water to top it off. Just put a little bit of water on the top, all the way, you want it all the way. Well, you know what, not too full because here's the thing, the vegetables are gonna make their own brine. So the vegetables are gonna release more fluid and it's gonna get two inches fuller. So keep it two inches lower than you would like it at first, okay? Like this one's probably too full now, which is fine. So, but yeah, it's going to increase in volume at least a couple inches, okay? And then we're going to put the lids on, and then we're going to shake it every day for the first week. Just shake it up every day for the first week. And then after that, I just let it be. And a year from now, four weeks from now, a year from now, six months from now, maybe six months, I don't know, um, I'll strain it and um, dehydrate it and add some honey. So, and I put them in old vinegar bottles like this, and it lasts for years. It's shelf stable, so keep it in the cupboard. It's vinegar. It's just infused. So, all right, guys. So that's how you make fire cider, and it's really good for cold and flu season, and it works. All right, guys. Before I let you go, I almost forgot. Before you put your lids on. Do it loosely, okay? You don't even have to put a lid on. Um, just put like a, 
uh, you can do like a cloth over it <clears throat> with a rubber band. Um, but I like to put saran wrap on and just loosely put that on, okay? And then make sure you tighten it uh, before you shake it. And the reason why I put saran wrap because um, metal, the vinegar is caustic and it'll rot the metal. So if you put saran wrap like that and leave it and then you shake it every day, you know? Me, 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 like that. And then you bend it, leave it loose. Just like so. Or, you know, um, put a cloth on with a rubber band, but then um, you're not going to be able to shake it, of course. You're going to have to put the lid on and shake it. So, to put the cloth back on. But, yeah, handy tip. All right, you guys, <laughs> I almost forgot to add the garlic. So, I put that in there about, about 40 pieces each shoved in here. So, already peeled garlic, um, like two giant handfuls. I'm, Force in here, so get those garlic pieces in there. Let's get all those garlic pieces in there. Can't forget that. Thank goodness I remembered. Um, so, but yeah, I got all the garlic in, so that was the last ingredient. So I almost forgot. But the rest of these, I'm just gonna put in here really fast, and we're gonna ferment these. So, because this is getting old. Garlic will turn green on you guys when you ferment or um, put it in vinegar because it has sulfurs in it and stuff. It's a chemical reaction with uh, the acid acid in the vinegar. So it turns green. So don't worry if you got green uh, garlic. So um, we're going to cover this with uh, water, but let's get a couple tablespoons. And this is no vinegar added. This is natural fermenting. And a couple tablespoons of salt. You know what I mean? Get that fermentation started. Okay. Add water. Cover it now. And then every day we're just going to shake it. And once it's going to start bubbling, and that's when you know it's working. And then when it, uh, you know, four, five, seven days, depending on where you're at and the temperature, um, you know, when it stops bubbling, that's when it's done. And then it's shelf stable. I leave it on the counter for like months. You know, several months, almost a year I've left it on the counter. But in the fridge, I mean, I have fermented garlic that's like two years old. So, less. Very long time. It turns, it makes its own vinegar, guys. So, it's very um, shelf stable. That's the old way of preserving things. I ferment like everything I can get my hands on. I ferment beets. I ferment... Pickles and cucumbers, like that's how you make pickles, right? Wax peppers are really good that way. Just water and salt. It's simple. So yeah, we're gonna put water over that. But yay, the tonic is beautiful. It's all done. <laughs> Don't forget when you're done to add that honey in for your kiddos. I'm telling you, <laughs> so much better to get it down them. Uh, I just have to convince my daughter, just take it, just take it, you'll feel better. Take it. <laughs> and she'd take it and then she'd feel better, but, um, yeah, it's just like drinking straight up vinegar. And this was like six, seven years ago. And then I realized I could put honey in it and it's so much better and the kids love it now. <laughs> Shanda never had a problem. Like, he likes taking that. He just likes it that way. So I make it both ways. Um... The honey one, and then the one without honey, and you can always add honey to it later if you need it, so. Alright guys, so that's how you do that. Make yourself some fire cider, slash tonic I call it. Um, really works, helps, really, really helps keep you healthy when cold season and everyone else around you sick. There's been many times me and my family have not gotten sick because I headed it off and I was like, nope, we're taking this. And then after the fact, it really helps speed things up and, you know, it, because of the heat to it, it helps with sore throats. And that's the main deal with winter colds, right? So, make yourself some tonic, guys. Fire cider. And uh, it'll keep around for a few years. I won't be doing this again for at least a couple years, like four years. That's how long my other one lasted because it makes so much. So... I'll just talk to you later and subscribe. Bye-bye.
So with the leftover horseradish guys, real fast, I'm just, before I let you go, I wanted to say I'm just gonna grate it and put it in a vial with vinegar and it'll be really good. It'll keep that way. Infuse the vinegar with horseradish. All right. Ugh. I can smell. 